Hey you all, I'm so happy to feel the dressmakers. You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. In this video, I'll be showing you how to cut and sew this neat, cute shirt. It's a back cow neck shirt with collar and it's also a, an extended shoulder or kimono sleeve. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to go about everything about the shirt, how to easily cut and join your two-piece collar to achieve something as neat and cute like this so this is going to be a straightforward tutorial and it's going to be detailed and simple in the next video i'll be showing you how to go about your straight leg pants with side pocket and having said all of that let's get to the tutorial proper i'll be drafting the shirt out for a better understanding and i have my pattern paper ready here i already drew out the starting line then i'll go ahead and start from that line and go down to my waistline and the shirt length my waistline is actually 17 inches but i use 16 for free dresses then the length of this shirt is 26 inches which i'll just mark the half length 16 and then the length 26 and connect the points like this then i'll start from this top line and mark my shoulder measurement divided by two I'll mark it, then I'll add extra 5 inches. This is totally optional. Like the 5 inches, you can do anything between 4 to 6 inches depending on um, your size. Then on that extended shoulder, like the 5 inches, I'll mark one and a half. Then I'll do a shoulder slant just like this. Okay. Then I'll start from this shoulder slope and go down to my round sleeve, which is 11, 5 and a half. And I'll be adding extra 2 for ease. That would be seven and a half. I'll mark it there. Now I'll come back to my original shoulder point, and from there I'll go down to my chest line and add extra one inch. You can add to one to two inches if you want. Mine is nine inches, and on that point I'm going to get my bust measurement divided by four plus extra two inches for ease. That is totally optional. On the waist I'll do the same thing. The waist measurement divided by four plus extra two inches for ease. And on the length, I'll, I'll mark my hip measurement divided by 4 plus extra 2 inches for ease. Depending on how big you want your shirt to be, you can also just use your hip measurement from the bust all the way to the length. Or use the larger part of your body from top to the length of the sleeve. I hope that is clear enough. Next, I'll come back to the shoulder, measure what I have in the whole of that point, and come to my round sleeve a minus half inch from there. And mark the value on the round sleeve point. So whatever you have on your shoulder measurement divided by 2 plus the extension, measure it and then come to your round sleeve and minus half or 1 inch. That is just so the sleeve is not dropping at the underarm part. Okay, the underarm part of the sleeve is not dropping. Then you're going to extend this line just like this. That's your round sleeve. Extend it just the same way you see me do this. For the next line, I'm using 3 by 3 inches. That's like a standard neckline measurement for me. And that's pretty much about the shirt. For the down part, you can decide to leave it like this or you give it a, any shape that you want. So I'm going to come up one and a half from the hem. And then I'm going to use my French curve to just um, curve it out this way. That's what I'll option. Go ahead and do whatever you want at the hem. Then I'm just going to cut it out. So we can cut it out on the fabric. So I'm using this beautiful silk fabric. I have about four yards here, which I will need um, roughly three and a half for this. So I'm going to fold it and place this one on it just like this. You can see how I folded the fabric. I hold the two salvage together this way. That way you cut um, your fabric so that the stretchy part is going to the side. Okay. Then I marked out two and a half for the button allowance. And place the pattern on that two and a half. I know you cannot see the marking. That's exactly why I choose to draft this thing on the paper so that you can see it. Because the chalk markings is likely not to be visible on the camera. Then after cutting it out, go ahead and notch the button allowance. And when you go to your ironing table, you're going to fold it the same way you see me doing it here. So that it's um, easier for you to stop at the button allowance and not exceed that. Depending on how big you want the placket to be that's totally optional but me two and that works for what i'm going for now for the back part i'm going to slash this point that round sleeve part that's like the chest line i'm going to slash it this way but do not cut it all through 
then you're going to fold your fabric as wide as this depending on how low you want the back neckline to be like the cow effect depending on how low you want it to be so you're going to pin it down the same way you see me doing it the down part of where you slashed you pin it down on the fabric then you're going to spread this one and measure from the next tip until you achieve your desired back length the back neckline length okay for me i want to do 13 inches so i'm going to make sure i have 13 inches measuring from the tip of the neckline okay you measure it this way when you are sure of what you're going for then you're going to pin it down just this same way you see me doing it if you want this to be you know the opening to be on your mid back you're going to measure your half length plus extra one inch or even two inches that way you see it be um, the opening be at your mid back so once you are sure of what you want you're going to mark a straight line from that neck tip to the folded part of the fabric then what i did there was just i added four inches for the facing and you can see how i slanted it going to the neck tip and then i'll cut it out this way okay so for the first thing you can choose not to slant it the same way you see me do it like you do that four inches straight whatever you have for the facing will be four inches from the center back going to the neck tip i hope you understand then you have to fold it in before you cut out the sleeve part i know you know how to cut cow neck right so i'll take out the pattern after cutting it out and let me show you the effect it will give us after what so it's going to be like this but <laughs> let's keep this aside now and work on the neckline proper so i'm going to tape this paper down to make it a whole um paper then i'll bring back the neckline cutouts and tape it down too to have this so once i'm done with that i'll now go ahead and measure around the neckline just like this and i think i have about nine and a half all together then i'm going to come down one and a half for the back neckline if you usually use one inch for your high neck for the back do that one inch here but personally i usually use one and a half while still maintaining the three inches as the neck width the back is one and a half depth and the front is three inches depth so i think i have about 7.25 for the back then 7.25 plus nine and a half that would be around 16.75 so 16.75 now will be the width of the collar why cutting the collar i'm going to use um a width of 16.75 i'll show you how to do that in a bit don't worry but have it in mind that the collar width is 16.75 now to cut you're going to get your collar stay or paper stay the hard one depending on whichever one you usually use for your color but i don't have that at the moment so i'm going to use this paper to illustrate okay but if you have it do this directly on the color stay so i'm going to divide the 16.75 by 2 and mark it like this and i'm going to rule it out just extend the line just like this then i'm going to come to this center point here and go up by like come in 0 0.75 then i will use my french curve to curve it like this going to the other point you see how i placed it right then i'll take the next measurement from this line i'll come in 1.25 for the first part of the two-piece color then i'll come to this other end and mark the same 1.25 and use my french curve to connect it together then after that i'll from that end you see the opening part this way i'll come in one and half then i'll go up three inches i'll come to the center point here and mark two inches three inches on this point and two inches on the center then you're going to place your ruler like this and connect it okay so i'm going to i'm um, trying to make sure i have the same three inches on this end three inches there then you connect it to the two inches on the center point okay now you're going to connect it from that one and half you came in on the other end from this one and half going to that three inches to went up just like this so really um already looking like a color <laughs> then you're simply going to curve or blend in this part this way you don't have to leave it straight like that okay now depending on what you want you can decide to leave it like this or you make this other end pointier the pointier you want it the more you 
go up like you do four or five inches that means you have to uh, fold the paper more than what you have here and you can also just leave the color like this if you don't want it as two piece and then you simply cut it out on your fabric and add your sewing allowance but i want a two piece color so i'm going to cut it out this way and then you're going to notch these two points you see me that's the two point that these two pieces will be meeting together or will be joining them together you're going to notch it now next on the list is the sleeve you are going to cut the rest of the sleeve like the complete part of the sleeve and you're simply going to minus five inches you extended the shoulder width while cutting the shirt right you remember so i might i minus four and a half here then i'm going down to my full length my sleeve length is 25 but i'm doing 23 here because i want to use the other two inches as a band then whatever you have on the shirt we have seven and a half you're going to mark the same thing remember my round sleeve is five and a half plus extra two inches for ease that's seven and a half and that's what i have from the top to the hem of the sleeve because i want to like gather the excess on the hem of the sleeve okay and i'm simply going to cut it out so after cutting this one out i'm going to use this one to cut out another one to make it two for these two sleeves then i'm going to prep all that you already cut out and then we start joining them so this is the color i use the paper we drafted to cut out two layers of paper stay since i don't have the hard um paper stay or the color stay i used the paper and that's what you're supposed to have okay if you will use your color stay to cut out this your pattern just place it on the fabric like you add your sewing allowance all around it and that's it and this is the back part i've gone ahead to um gum down the facing and now the neckline is straight just like this okay then for the front too i also gone down the bottom placket you can decide to sew if you want but i just um use them um, fabric glue which i used it the wrong way not like it's my first time but <laughs> i used it the wrong way today so it's reflecting on the right side of the fabric what i'm simply going to do now is to just go ahead and place the shoulders together like much of the shoulder right side facing right side um i'll place it on the shoulder then i'll place this one too and go ahead and stitch it down then after joining the shoulder i'll go ahead and join the other part of the sleeve which i already have the midpoint notched i'll join it to have something like this can you see so i went ahead to press open the seam and <laughs> already finish up this part of the sleeves i'll be showing you how i did that with this other part okay so i have this and we have the shoulder and then we have the sleeve join in there which i ironed out so i'm simply going to get the midpoint of the sleeve this way i would also get the midpoint of the band it's just uh, simple there's nothing serious about the band just um one layer of paper stay on a cut out fabric like this i'll get the midpoint and then on this part that i did not fold i'm going to place the sleeve right side on the right side of the band i'll match up the joinings then i'm going to pleat the excess so that i have something like this and when i'm done i'm going to now turn the um band this part that's already folded on the band i'm going to place it this way and then top stitch and that's it for the sleeves so after all of that i went ahead to close the side to have something like this i fitted the dress and the sleeve is kind of longer not really that long but for a loose sleeve it's long so why <laughs> i would be wearing it with the band inside this way and it's actually so cute right then when you want to iron you will notice some tension on this armhole part you're simply just going to notch it this way so that it will release the tension you have around that part and then you have a smooth um finishing by the time you're done ironing now for the color i'm simply going to place these two parts right side facing right side then i'm going to stitch it all around following the allowance i have there but then if you notice the way i iron the paper stay is not really nice on one end so i'm going to maintain what the allowance i started on the part that is right and go all around simple then for this one i'm simply going to fold it on this end 
do the same thing for this one to have something like this can you see if i had used color stay you see that this color would be really smooth and nice even looking at it but it's okay <laughs> so i'm going to fold it this way get the midpoint and then i'll fold the other one and get the midpoint too then i will also get the midpoint which i already have on the other part but i think it's just on one part that i have the midpoint so i'm going to get the midpoint on both ends and then i will now go ahead and place it match up all the midpoint <laughs> for the three uh, three piece now i'm going to match up the midpoint this way then you're going to pin it down it's important that you pin it down on one end and then you sew on the allowance you have there all the way to the other end to have something like this it's really simple so i'm going to simply trim off the excess i have around there just trim off the excess and then i will just go ahead and iron it very smooth i'll turn it out and go ahead and iron it out then after ironing you can decide to just stitch a style line <laughs> around the collar or you do that after fixing it on the neckline whichever one but i'm not even going for that um style stitches so i'm simply going to take the shirt this way then you take one end of the neckline and then you slide it into the collar this way collar this way <laughs> and then you're going to like pin it down if you want but you're simply going to stitch from the center front of the neckline to the joining you have on the shoulder on one end and then you're going to take this other end and slide it in pin it down and then you're also going to stitch from the center neckline to the stitches you have on the shoulder joining do not exceed that shoulder joining okay whichever way you want to do it but do not exceed that shoulder joining and do not stretch the neckline of the shirt if you're stitching so that it does not expand right then after that i'll simply go ahead and hem the shirt and that's it so this will be the end of our story today let me know your thoughts in the comment section and i'll see you in my next one be good bye